Hello, in this video we are going to look at input and output for files and just input and output in general. So, for starters, we've already done output. Print, this is output. We are outputting to the screen. So if I put in hello world, and you might notice that in this video I'm not running it on the online ID. So that's just simply because when we get to the file input output side, depending on the online ID, you can't really do it. It's good for test in certain pieces of code, but for some stuff like file input output, it's not the best. So that's the reason I'm doing this locally. Obviously, I covered how to set up Python locally on different platforms. Feel free to check out those videos in the intro section. Once you're done with that, if you didn't already do it, then come back here and we can continue with file input output. Okay, so print, hello world. If we were to run this now, so if I save it, it will run module, we get hello world. So, you know, simple stuff. We know all about, you know, printing now. We, we are a master at printing. We don't need a refresher course or anything like that. So let's have a look at the input method, which, you know, as I think you can guess, allows us to get some something from the user and it's just raw input. So if I do, instead of this let's say i'm going to create a variable called var1 and inside here i'm going to sign the content of what we get from the user so i'm going to do input i'm going to say enter something please and now we're just going to do print var1 and if i were to run this So enter something, if I say 78, it prints out 78. It, we've been able to get user input now, so that's really it for user input. But obviously, we'll, let's go a little further and have a look at, you know, opening files, closing files, that sort of stuff. Because at the end of the day, without, you know, being able to access external files, we're going to be, you know, pretty heavily limited. So I want to show you my project directory. It's just a Python file. So what you can do is initiate a command called open and the open command will open a file. So if I, we're going to assign the content of the file to a variable. So I'm going to say var2 equals open is the command. You specify the file you're opening. So I'm going to say file.txt and then you put a comma and from here you can specify essentially the mode so you can have off which opens the file for reading only and you can open it for reading and writing you can open it for you know in binary format for example and this overrides the file the file if it exists if it does not exist it creates a new file so let's just have a look at it for you know just reading for now so R specify it like so and that is it for opening it so if we save that see what we get when we open it now what I'm gonna snap this down like so there we go so we can see everything now if we go back save re rerun it uh, this doesn't matter. So we're getting an error. So it says no such file or directory. And you know, it's right, there is no file here with that name. But if we were to open it in another type of way, let's say when if we open it in a binary format, which is WB, I'll provide a link we can find all of the different formats. And now if I were to run it. I think this created the file if it didn't exist. And you know what? I'm actually going to comment this input line out because it's just you know slowing down things. It'll still be there. So when you have a look at the source code, you can check it out. So this var2 contains all of the content of our file. So if we do print var2, and if I save it and rerun this. And you know, that's what we get. It's opened it into var2. So 
we can, we can get the name in the file. We can you know check if it's closed or not. We can check the different mode, for example. And we're gonna have a look at reading and writing as well. So let me just show you how to get the name of it. So like var2 dot name and the other methods you can check out as well from the link in the description. And there you go, that's the name of the file. The other thing I want to mention is once you really you know done with a file, you should close it. So the clove method of clove the clove close method of like a file it basically flushes any you know information that's unwritten and closes the file object and at which point you can't write any more so that command would be i'll put it down here because that should be the last thing var2 so you know the name of our object dot close and that's it so it's closed for business you can't do anything after that obviously you know no point running it because the result will still be the same so now let's have a look at writing something to the file so let's write something to the file let's say you do var2 dot write and you know we can put something in here it doesn't really matter what it is let's just say hello my name is bob so if i save that and if I, as you can see, the contents of this is empty, so zero bytes. So if I save it, rerun this, oh yeah, sorry, my bad. I'll put WB. What we want to do is put you know W for you know it's going to be writable, and the writable again, if it doesn't exist, it will all create it. But it does exist so we can just save that so the different mode will depend on what sort of content you can for put in and there you go it's updated it was hello my name is bob but how do we actually read the contents so reading it is actually pretty darn simple and i think you can guess the way you do it you do so we're gonna create a local string one equals var2 dot read and what you do is specify a parameter and this is the number of bytes to be read from the open file and it just starts reading from the start so if i put in two two bytes and now if i do string i want to print it as so print string one run the module okay see where we are going wrong where what is happening so something has gone wrong so dot read into string one it's not readable oh it's only writable so we need to change the mode so it is readable as well so obviously we want to be able to read the contents. So R plus and we'll comment out this line for now. We already know there's content in there. All of these modes can you know start making stuff confusing. And hmm. Seem like it's overwritten it. That's weird. So let me just put something in here. So if I save that as hello, and if I rerun this, there we go. It's got the first two bytes up. I don't know why the content got deleted there for some reason. I think it's to do with the mode that messed things up. So if I were to put 10, for example, run this that gets the first 10 bytes and all of the content can fit within the first 10 bytes just make sure you close it afterwards as well so you can also check for essentially file positions you can check like the current position of a file like based on its path and that method is called tau just t-e-l-l -L. i want you to check that out yourself there's a method for 
renaming a file. So if I go here and to rename a file, we want to actually do an import. So import OS and what we can do just we can rename it's going to need to be when we've opened the files we don't need the file open for this so just do os.rename and we need to specify the name the name of the file we're renaming so file.txt we are renaming it to new name.txt and as you save that rerun the module as you can see it's renamed it to new name txt we can also remove a file as an extra task i want to do that yourself and that's just remove our, i'll actually put it here and so you can have a go so it's os.remove and it's just the file name itself so file name i should say file location i guess because it could be within a folder file location and file name obviously this is not it so just replace this with what you want and just be careful that you don't delete some file that's important to you obviously always be careful of that you can also make a directory for example so you can do, do this you can do os.mkdir this will make a directory so if you want to say new folder save that Run the module. And yeah, he's moaning about this because does not exist. They renamed it. <laughs> I am going to actually comment this out because this is going to cause errors, problems, just because you know the way I've got the program laid out for educational purposes. And you know, it's literally just created the folder there. You can also change directories as well. So you can remove directories with the rmdir command. And there's like so many methods that you can use. Once you have got to grips with what we've covered in this video, honestly, you're all good to go. Like I said, I'll provide a link in the description so you can see the more advanced functionality as well. Feel free to check that out. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.